want strong, sustainable, and shared economic growth, but preferably clean, which then speaks to the you know, climate change issues, green growth, and, and so forth. But what are the options available? I think uh, basically there are, there are several. One is, is, is really investing in infrastructure, particularly regionally infrastructure. And infrastructure here is both soft infrastructure and hard infrastructure. Right. It's one thing to bring road, build roads, railways, and so forth, right. but do they work? Right. What are the bureaucratic challenges around those facilities that will make them you know, right. work better if, if that was dealt with? So infrastructure investment. Number two uh, is basically higher education investment. So skills development. Uh, vocational training is a critical issue in Africa. What has happened with the MDGs, we, Africa has done very well when it comes to you know, mass primary school education, but it's now, now we must move to the next level, which is higher education, capacitate institutions, develop the vocational training, and, and so forth. The, the, the other issue is the promotion and support for the private sector. Uh, development or growth can only be sustainable if you support the private sector. The private sector is the key to sustainability for various fronts, whether it's, it's a, you know, just simple resource mobilization, it's, it's job creation and employment, wealth creation, support for the middle class, uh, middle, middle class uh, within the population, promoting entrepreneurship. So anything that promotes this, the private sector, the middle class, is, is really welcome. Those, those are some of the critical factors around supporting growth in Africa. Let's break down what you said in terms of the various components, starting with infrastructure. We all know about the infrastructure deficit in Africa and the cost of doing business. We know this, this conversation's been had. But looking at the various models that can be implemented, you're seeing in something like Lagos State, Nigeria, PPPs working really well, where government will issue out concessions to the private sector they will build, they will use, they'll recover their money, and eventually after a period of time, hand it back to the state, sell it back to the state in many ways. That's not quite the way it happens in other parts of Africa. And the question is, where is there a level of compromise where government can bring in what they can bring in and the private sector can bring in the capital that's needed for infrastructure development? Absolutely. The starting point is policy. We know a few governments, such as in Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda, and Egypt, the governments have taken a step towards coming up with policies, instruments, statutes for dealing with PPPs. Uh, so that's the first step. But there's, so there's a willingness. And then secondly, then the resources. For instance, when we lend money as the FDB, the African Development Bank, we always require the country to put in something as well, to show commitment, there's accountability, responsibility, then we put in our large component in there. So, so th those are some of the, the strategies through which the government then should, could come in policy and then put in something but we we, we we put in the rest and then and then and then now you've got the legal framework for for managing PPPs do you have do, do you have the right people to put the contracts together mm. the documentation together it's very complex how do you tie down private sector you know partners for 30 years in a build operate or, and, and and transfer type in a boot or BOT type arrangement and there must be a, some legal uh, environment to enforce those contracts to, but also to give the private sector confidence in that vast in that, in that you know, relationship to, to show them that, look, government is a worthy partner, is a credible partner. Mm -hmm. All that needs to be put in place, then it will work. Mm -hmm. It has worked elsewhere, why, why not uh, right. elsewhere else in Africa, if I can do an, an elsewhere else type, 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 so, so it can work. I mean, I think the biggest infrastructure problem we have in Africa, ultimately, is energy supply. And you see the three big economies in Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, and South Africa, having an energy security crisis, ultimately, right. at the moment. And here you've seen it being very tricky to try to engender support from the private sector, especially on things like um, renewables, getting independent power producers to come to the party. Um, I know in South Africa they've looked at elements of commercializing, for instance, a new build of power projects in Kusia, Kukusile, and also That's the right. Mudupi plant. Mm -hmm. But the issue is the private sector is reluctant to get involved when the economics doesn't make sense, because ultimately something that should be provided by the government um, has some sort of a government subsidy and so you never, when you charge the consumer, charge market tariffs. That's correct. And th that kind of economic calculation almost says to the private sector, step back. Uh, absolutely. Let, let's take South Africa and Nigeria. They're, they're a bit different. In Nigeria, you, you, you find the federal government trying to generate power, transmit, and distribute. To me, it shouldn't be the case. Mm. I think when it comes to generation, government can be involved, but the private sector should also be involved in those PPPs. When it comes to, to transmission, 
the government then can be involved. When it comes to distribution, the local governments should be involved. So, so you TA it, and local governments should have the contracting power to contract with whoever in, in terms of distribution. So there should be a division of labor in that sense. Uh, coming to South Africa, uh, again, again the same thing. You need a division of labor. It's happening already in South Africa in, in that sense. But you're right about the setting of tariffs, making sure they're economic, they're competitive. That, that's, that's always a big issue. And, and either way, you always pay. If you set the wrong tariff to make it affordable to people, you always pay because then you can't invest back to build more capacity. Then you have power cuts, then you have complaints. So there's no free lunch. It will always come back to bite. So, so the, I think the message is let's set the tariffs at the right level right. to enable investors to come through at the generation end all the way to transmission and distribution.